Hello makers, educators, and allies looking to make positive changes in the world. Welcome to Advocacy Through Fashion Technology. My name is Carrie Leung, maker at heart, educator in practice, and director of Make Fashion EDU. Make Fashion EDU is a collaboration between industry leader in fashion tech, Make Fashion, and educational nonprofit, Steamhead. It is a worldwide network of teachers and students who combine fashion and technical know-how as a means of self-expression and advocacy. We showcase it all in a series of videos, publishing, and most exciting of all, on the fashion runway. In fact, Make Fashion EDU was born after my students demanded me to look at fashion tech pieces and nonstop bugged me to have it as a project for our class a few years ago. Since then, we've seen increased engagement of students in STEM topics, especially the students that historically have been reluctant to engage. We've seen students that struggle with expressing themselves orally or in writing find this mode of expression through fashion and visual storytelling more accessible and along the way, having to read and write. Above all, we've seen confidence and empowerment imbued in our students after they have experienced having themselves, their design, and their work exhibited on the runway in videos and in books to an audience outside of their daily lives. Our hope is in the next 45 minutes, you walk away inspired and have the steps too. Give your students time and space to advocate for something they care about, and Candace will cover that. Then we'll have James, and you can try your hand at some easy electronics. Finally, use fashion and visual storytelling as a way to overcome the academic challenges and reluctance of engagement of STEAM and or self-expression in the classroom. Presented by Twyla and Haley. Candace, you're up. Hi, my name is Candace Massey, and I'm the creative director for Make Fashion EDU. I'm going to give you a bit of background about myself and my personal journey um, with Make Fashion EDU. I am from the South. I am from Memphis, Tennessee. I have been a classroom teacher for nursery, pre-K, and kindergarten. Um, and I've been an art teacher for primary and middle school. I have been teaching 14 years. And I have been an international teacher for 12 of those years. When I first experienced Make Fashion EDU, it was the first time I saw holistic learning, teaching, and advocacy full circle. I saw how it all connected together. And not only am I the creative director for Make Fashion EDU, I have that experience. I also have been a designer for Make Fashion EDU, a parent, a teacher, and a mentor. And as I reflect on each one of those roles and how it affected my kids, my students, and myself, my first response is, this is dope. But through Make Fashion EDU, I did advance my learning. I learned new things. I learned how to engineer. I learned how to code, code micro bits from my second graders. I learned how to wire. And I learned how wire and electricity work together. And I'm not great at any of those things. However, there was always a person willing to set aside time for me to learn. And that is a major part of Make Fashion EDU. We make time for learning during school, after school, on our lunch breaks, on the weekends. But it's fun. Because each one of those meetups or each one of those uh, times you meet up with people, someone is always sharing their ideas or what they learn. So you always are learning. You're constantly learning something. It's important to keep to teach kids advocacy um, and for them to be responsible for their own advocacy because they question a lot. And sometimes they have found it hard to express themselves, especially um, sometimes it's culturally that they cannot ask questions or or they just can't. They have no freedom of communication or, or even in the family dynamic there. Uh, some of the girls cannot speak up or ask questions or express themselves um, in certain families, uh, the elder son. Uh, opinion matters and the younger son opinion does not matter because if you can't talk if you're constantly being told you know your opinion doesn't matter you can't express this you know you you sort of stop and you you don't you just roll on with life and do as you're told and that's not what you actually want in life or you know that's not what you want to do 
I had one student who had ADHD and he loved designing clothes, loved designing clothes. And he is a pure joy to watch when he's creating. And he was bullied for it. Um, and it was labeled as a girl thing in his culture. The boys would bully him. And every time he created, oh, he made his own templates. He knew how he wanted to affect the audience with the fabric as, they, as he walked down the runway. He could focus, but he could not focus in a traditional classroom. He cannot sit down. But he can learn, but it has to be meaningful. He has to understand what what is the purpose. And kids will often come to us and ask us, why are we learning this? What's the purpose? And I would say, well, you need to go advocate for your learning. Ask your teacher why this is important and why you need to learn it. And be mindful that the teacher works for you. And it's not the other way around. It's um, it's important to teach our kids advocacy because they need to know that they are human. And uh, they need to know that they have a voice and they can make change happen and they can make others aware of issues or problems that are meaningful to them. And they can show you how to solve these real world problems creatively through Make Fashion EDU. And we had two boys that were really concerned about cycle safety in the park. Um, and so they created a backpack with a distance sensor. And as a person got close, the sensor would get brighter and brighter, making the person aware of their surroundings. Because in the dark, you can't see right. But this sensor is bright and it gets brighter when someone gets closer to you. But that's a problem they sought out to solve. You have kids that shut down in English and math and they come to me and they, for four months, they are researching, they are writing, they're reflecting, they're self-managing because I don't stand over them. I treat them as a designer, this is their job. Um, they have to make their own schedule. They have to adhere to the deadlines that are set for them. They have to schedule, schedule conferences and send emails and things like that. Here is your real world problem solving because they have picked a problem and for four months have researched, wrote about it, planned it out, figured out how they want to use it, found materials, have talked to other people that have had experience in this field or how, you know, how they want to do things. And at that moment when all those things are magically happening, this is where your IEP comes in. This is where that differentiation is. That's where that rigor is. In this, little, in this fast-paced world, kids have the opportunity to advocate for themselves on TikTok, on Instagram, on all their social media platforms. Speaking and sharing provides and sharing their story inspires others to go out and do something. Do something where it's right, whether it's write a book, design something, open a business. It's inspiring to see a kid reach their goal, and this experience keeps on giving. This advocating for kids learning their way and expressing themselves when solving a problem is what Make Fashion ED platform is about. Fashion technology learning, solving problems creatively. For me, advocacy is to publicly and actively stand up for something, to believe in something so strongly that I am personally willing to sacrifice, whatever that may be. As a kid, it was about advocating for myself and for my family because I refused to believe the limitations folks set for me to define who I am. I can only imagine where I'd be if I hadn't. I think about this every day as a teacher, as I work with my students. As my confidence grew in the belief that I can make a change, I started to advocate for the communities I care about. And I think it's critical that we teach our kids advocacy or else they become what they are told to be instead of who they want to be. The lesser known side of advocacy is just as paramount. It is about listening, thoughtfulness, and understanding of what is going on. It is thinking critically about how my own perspective and the perspectives of others shape our understanding. How can you advocate your beliefs if you don't have an understanding of what the situation is, what the variables are, and how making changes will impact the situation? Candace made powerful points on the need to let our students know that they are human. They have a voice, they have agency to make change happen. 
things start to matter for them because they know they matter. I mean, isn't that part of the reason why we educate ourselves in the first place? I want to answer this question with a project that personally resonated with me deeply. Meet Alexa, Alan, and Camilo. They are advocates for immigrant rights. They pose the question, what is the soul of America? Has it changed? Unprompted, Alexa recited, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. Where was this from again, Miss Liam? The new Colossus and the Statue of Liberty became the guide to this team's design. On one side, their wings of liberty, glowing bright LEDs and pristineness, symbolizing the hope and sacrifice their families made to pursue the American dream. On the other side, their pieces battered and bloody, amplified with red LEDs, signifying the wounds and hurt of the immigrant experience. In addition to the LEDs, this team also rigged a sensor and programmed servos to lift the wings when Alexa raises her fist in strength at the end of the runway. Well, that was the plan anyways. Unfortunately, COVID has postponed the runway walk. For the time being, their advocacy piece is shared in a published book. The students produced. This team drew upon their personal experiences and channeled it into their piece. There was so much power in their share. Parents risking death and incarceration so that their children can have a chance at education. Loved ones separated indefinitely at a chance for a better life. The team posed the question of why would anyone ever risk this? The discourse that ensued brought about much perspective to not only our class, but understanding to our entire community. It also became a safe space to share and encouraged the sharing of our own stories, including my own story and other adults in the school. I ear hustled the kids discussing amongst their peers things like, this isn't just something that happens on the news, it happened to my friend, or, whoa, not sure if I'd be brave enough to do that. Or, you know, thoughtfulness of, I can't imagine being separated from my sister. These stories became real. These stories brought us closer. As for the team, Alexa Allen Camilo told me it was liberating and empowering at the same time. Why? Because they were heard and that their story mattered. Make Fashion EDU is an equity project. It started with their students' interest, and it's grown into a network of educators, makers, youth, families, and industry supporting this equity project. There's a piece of all of us on this platform, and it's for everyone. People that have no access to resources or know-how. People that do not have a voice. People that are not included, whether implicitly or explicitly. When our students see themselves on the runway, in a published book, on a website that they had a hand in producing and is being looked at by people outside of the school community, they know they can make things happen. They know they can be heard. They know that there is a community to support them. They know that their learning is relevant for the now and later. Uh, but let's not just hear from us. Let's check out what the Make Fashion EDU veterans have to say from Tucson, Arizona's Hollinger K-8. through Local, late breaking. You're watching KOLT News 13 live at 5. You know that they can create something to have that opportunity. Nice, looking good. Fashion show preparations are underway in Tucson, but this is no ordinary show. Students from the Tucson Unified School District will be showcasing designs they made. The students have learned skills in the STEM fields by incorporating lights and electricity in the clothing pieces themselves. KOLD News 13's Jasmine Ramirez got a behind the scenes look before they hit the stage. Students have been preparing for this fashion show since October and tomorrow is their big day to showcase all their hard work on this runway. Fabric, yeah, lights, and lots of creativity all have come together to create these works of art. It's meaningful to them. So yeah, that's the best part for me is just when they see it, they've done it. The Make Fashion EDU STEM Runway Show is much more than just fashion. 
It teaches students to use their imaginations and to incorporate technology yeah, while doing so. Well, All of the kids have gone, have learned to use circuit blocks, with how to make a circuit, what's a short circuit, all of that. And then we also use uh, coding, block coding. And when the lights go out, you can see the designs come to life. I program it and so when I shake it, I like to turn off. And there's B and A, so there's two different kinds of colors. Each student's clothing design also has its own unique story and inspiration. I chose the galaxy because I like astronomy and stuff about like out of the world. Las Flores because my mom like everywhere we moved she always had a plants. Uh, she had always had a garden and plants inside of her house. Fifth grader Ellington Reed made a colorful dog mask that has a meaningful message behind it. I want to impress like everyone is different and you should not judge them by their looks. He says his design represents acceptance and treating everyone equally. People are mistreating people and animals negatively and I want that to change because like we should be all open mind for each other. The masks, dresses and shirts are set to hit the runway, but the students share they're a bit anxious about the big debut. And I'm kind of nervous since this is a mess. I kind of feel like, and I'm really clumsy, I kind of feel like I'm going to fall off the stage. The show is open to the public and begins at 4.30 tomorrow. At the Dunbar Pavilion, Jasmine Ramirez, KLD News 13, live local, late breaking. Hi, I'm James. Six years ago, I left manufacturing and went full-on maker educator. I have been bringing engineering and design into classrooms, and I'm here today to share with you what I feel are the easiest ways to get started with electronics and lights in your classroom. So, you have found some time for tech. The good news is that an initial set of materials and tools is reusable and simple. I've linked below to an Amazon list of common starter items. Uh, it took us a whole year to move beyond these items. They are versatile and there is a lot that you can do with them. But when you are ready for more, there's a huge world of motors, coding, and interactive pieces that glow when you approach or change when you pose, you can check out our Instagram or seasonal book for some details on those projects. Right now, I'm going to show you two short activities that can excite and broaden perspectives when introducing LEDs to students. This first activity uses a single LED and a three volt coin cell battery. Let me show you how they look. So to turn this LED on, you just grip it on either side of the battery. So the legs here, one goes on the negative side, one goes on the positive side. Actually, the, uh, the long leg goes on the positive side and the short leg goes on the negative side. You could teach your students um, something about electronics theory, or you could just teach them how to turn the lights on. So can you put more than one LED on it? Yeah, you can. Uh, you can just stack them up. Uh, if you get one of the LEDs backwards, it won't turn on. But as soon as you flip it around, they'll both be on. You can actually stack a lot of LEDs on here. Uh, it gets harder to hold them with your fingers and to hold them down with tape, but as many as your students want to put on is okay. Uh, a single LED could last for about 48 hours, depending on how much your battery is charged. Two LEDs, that'd be about half the time. So think about that when you are putting them in place on permanent projects or for exhibition. To hold the LEDs, LEDs down, um, I like to use electrical tape. Electrical tape is a little bit flexible, so it does a great job of holding things down tightly. And also, if you want to unpeel it to turn your LEDs off, it unpeels and repeels pretty well. So this is just a simple 10 second lesson. How do we get something that inspires students to use these LEDs for expression and also gives them time to to troubleshoot the materials and get some hands-on lessons. So how are lights used in the world? Flashlights, headlights, lamps. We can stick the LED behind the paper after drawing uh, items that show the use of illumination in the world. But what about uh, different colors. How is color used in the world? A 
so what do red lights mean? Red lights can be can be brake lights. Uh, they can be do not cross signs. They can even be indicators on a hot stove. So those are some warnings for red lights, but can red be used to mean different things? Can the same color have different meanings? Okay, so say red lights. They don't have to be warnings. Red lights can be the love of a valentine. It can be Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer's nose. Uh, what, else, what else can we do with these lights? Uh, actually, if you don't put a piece of tape on and leave a little bit of space between the LED leg and the battery, then you can draw something new. Bing, 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 bing. Okay, so that's how you can take uh, single LEDs and develop a lesson plan that, get, that gets kids experience with taping down the legs and also expressing emotions through the use of light. So single LEDs are fantastic and cheap, but now let's take a look at the coolest and priciest, but very reusable and versatile LEDs, programmable LEDs. Come with me while I step into the makerspace. Line bits, super cool. You can put them on your head. You can put them on your horse. You can put them in angel wings, war wings. You can put them in wedding dress, all kinds of uses. Line bits are great. So how do we turn them on? With a bit controller and a battery, any battery, or a USB plug, or a laptop with a USB, any USB. So you got your line bits, you got your bit controller and a battery. What do we do? Why won't it work? Why won't it work? Okay, take all of your things, all of the ends of all of your things. If they can go together, then it will work. So, that one can only go right there. This one has got some spiky bits, some spiky bits. It can't go together. It's not working. It's the, it doesn't really fit. Uh, it fits right here. Okay, so, push it in. It's on. There are some buttons right here that you can press to change the color, mess around with it. This one slows it down. This one goes backwards. Just pick out, find some colors that you like, play with it. Now it's too bright. I want it off. I want it off. Okay, so you can unplug it right there. It's off. It's fine. You're done. If you really want to unplug it right here, see, you're trying to pull it across. There's all these little hooks and things. Uh, there's actually just one bit right here. You press it down and then release. Or you can just leave it in there. This thing, if you broke it off, that would be fine too. There's some little things right here. That's just to help you pull. If you can pull it apart, pull it apart. You'll hear it click in. Click. Now you know it's secure. That's out. That's in. So we plug everything in. Ah, it's not working. It's not working. Ah, it's not, it's not actually plugged in. There we go. It's plugged in. Look at this. Even if you plug it a little bit in, it starts working, but it's not very tight. So you got to push it all the way in. So that is your line bit and your bit controller and your battery ready to go. Here are the line bits in action. You can see them attached to the project and Haley has used a controller to program meaningful ocean colors into her project about recycling plastic. Okay, so color, so what? Well, before we talked about how color is used. Let's dive deeper into that. Here is a quick worksheet that we use to inspire a lot of conversations. Healthy disagreement, and sometimes even just find connections with people on topics that we didn't know that we agreed on. The worksheet works with or without colored markers. You can just write a color name in with pencil, or if you have colored markers, fill in the color of your choice. One time we did it with watercolors in an art class and the results were amazing. Here is a worksheet that we decided not to use. The worksheet seems to direct students into traditional color sets as if there were correct and incorrect answers. Generally, our philosophy is to decentralize knowledge away from the teacher as an authority figure and to put more focus into knowledge creation rather than consumption. Sorry, a little bit off topic, 
but we do carefully construct our activities so that our educational philosophies show through. Let's talk about applying lights to projects. The placement of lights, how they diffuse, and what they highlight can be as insightful and as complicated as different styles of painting. This is a serious field, and the skill ceilings are quite high. But today, I want to encourage you and your students to simply get started. There are a lot of simple but highly expressive ways to introduce fashion tech into your classroom. Right here is a set of wings. Uh, built as a group project, but with each student designing their own set and then coming together to help each other assemble them. You can see the lights running along the edge of the wings. We used hot glue. Packing tape would have worked here as well. Right here is a dress that simply layers fabric on top of the LEDs. Looks great, right? The fabric diffuses the lights and the pre-programmed controllers set the colors. So we have seen where to get lights, how to turn on the little LEDs and create some engaging activities around them, and also how to turn on the programmable lights. And one way to encourage student exploration around selecting meaningful colors and patterns. Hello, I'm Twyla Busby, and I am pleased to have the opportunity to talk to you about Make Fashion EDU and my experiences in working with students and teachers to have a project showcase in the form of a runway show. I've been in education for 20 plus years and most of those uh, years I have been an advocate for project-based learning. When Carrie and Ben started Make Fashion EDU, I immediately jumped on board because I could see the potential for learning for our students. I am not an engineer, nor have I worked in the fashion industry. I'm an educator, but I can Google and watch YouTube videos really well. And for more complicated concepts or ideas that are way beyond my comprehension, I ask experts for help. I mentioned this because sometimes classroom teachers are intimidated by the idea of technology, and that should not be a barrier to stop us from using fashion tech to engage, to instruct, and create for our students, especially our most vulnerable students who wouldn't have the opportunities otherwise. As most of you are maker educators, maybe the tech is the easy part for you, but it's the fashion piece or organizing the runway show that scares you. At the end of the day, Make Fashion EDU is not really about tech nor fashion. It's about students creating and telling their stories through those creations. It just so happens that fashion is a great medium for storytelling and quickly engages the imagination and technology expands the creative possibilities. I am currently in Tucson, Arizona, where I work at a K-8 school that has a demographic of 87% free and reduced lunch and 96% of our students identify as Hispanic. We are a dual language school and we have a very committed and supportive staff. While our community is not financially well off, we have a richness of culture, of generosity and experience. Make Fashion EDU has given me the opportunity to take advantage of these resources. So along with building community, why do students learn something through a fashion tech project? Or in other words, why get involved in something as complex and laborsome as Make Fashion EDU? Setting aside the joy and pride that students experience as they wear or watch their months of hard work walking down the runway, what do students learn in the process? Inherent in a Make Fashion EDU project of designing, constructing, and showing fashion pieces is storytelling. Students must decide what is important to them and then write that narrative. Often it takes multiple drafts to get to the essence of what they want to say, and then how will that be translated into the garment or accessory they design? These writing pieces are displayed and compiled into a book, which gives purpose to the writing. This year, with the physical constraints of the pandemic, students will also read and record their stories 
which will then be shared during the virtual fashion show that we will have. I love that during Make Fashion, students ask each other, what's your story? Instead of the, what are you supposed to be? That is often heard at other times. Visual literacy is so important today as we are all bombarded with images, both moving and still, and we need to make sense of them. When designing, students need to make decisions about using elements such as color, line, shape, and texture to tell their story. As they do this, they become more aware of how these elements are used to influence our thinking all the time. Of course, Make Fashion EDU includes a design thinking process. Students go through the steps, not to make the creative process rigid, but to give them structure to help the creativity flow. The test and modify cycle happens often, as ideas don't always work out just as we have planned. Receiving and giving critique is also a natural part of designing and constructing pieces. Fashion tech can be a way to introduce students, especially girls, who do not consider themselves to be techies, to coding and electronics. At first, I was concerned about boys and their interest in sewing and making clothes, but that was my own bias. The first day I started Kids on Sewing Machines, the boys were the first to sign up. Sometimes I forget that sewing machines are technology too. So skills such as sewing, pattern making, sketching, as well as having new tech from plug and play lights to microcontrollers and sensors are a part of what students learn to do to tell their stories. Persistence, collaboration, communication, resourcefulness are all intrinsic to the undertaking of creating a piece for the runway. Now you may be saying, I believe all those things are important, but how do I justify the time and expense of Make Fashion EDU project to my administrators or even to other teachers? What about the standards? What about the test? How do I take time for our Make Fashion EDU and keep pace with the district curriculum map? I sometimes wonder, how did we get ourselves into this either or way of schooling? Can't we provide meaningful opportunities for students to learn and then apply that learning to something that matters to them? I think Make Fashion EDU is one way we can have it all. First off, the engagement part is easy. Kids care about fashion and they can understand that what they wear sends a message or tells a story. So we don't have to spend a lot of time on garnering interest. Now, what about academic standards? Incorporate the standards into the process. Writing standards, especially narrative writing, can be learned and practiced within the context of the fashion tech show. Everyone needs a story to go with their piece. Design groups can write individually and as a team. Show how the writing process and design process are comparable. Research standards and close reading have a theme for the runway. Students then must research relevant topics and choose the topic that speaks to them, then tell that story through the fashion piece. For example, a broad theme could be environment, which could kill two birds with one stone by including science standards as well. Students learn research skills as they read and study habitats or recycling or climate change or the effects of humans on an environment. Then they write a narrative piece explaining their understanding and how it is shown in their design that will be on the runway. Or it could be historical research. We know how important primary and secondary resources are. Or social activism, as you will see later. Currently, the teachers I am working with now want to promote helping and serving others. So we have a theme of philanthropy this year. Math standards. We know that in order to make learning stick, you have to do something with it. Measurement, fractions, ratio, proportion, and scale are an expected part of design. So no one ever asks, when am I ever going to use this? Money and finances can be embedded in the project by establishing budgets or business plans for marketing pieces. Most of these concepts need to be directly taught as usual but they're embedded within the context of making a fashion tech piece to show to others. A caveat is to be sure to allow for student voice and choice in all this, especially in the design. Now, don't get me wrong. This isn't easy. 
MAGFashionEDU isn't a simple activity that is completed in a day. I plan on three to five months of teaching, work, and activities. A teacher has to be like an orchestra conductor with many different instruments playing many different parts of the music and hoping that it all comes together in the concert. Or maybe a juggler is a better analogy with many balls in the air, hoping that one doesn't come down and upset the whole routine. This is why I reach out to the community. It is really tough to do this alone. I ask for donations of materials, time, and expertise. I partner with several teachers who each have great ideas and feedback. Not all of the teachers at my school are excited to participate, but that's okay. I found that after people see their first show, many are convinced that this is something they want to be a part of because they see the joy in the kids. This also brings up the cost of doing this project. As I mentioned, my school is not a wealthy one. My parents are not millionaires and there are expenses, especially in the technology area. I have used donors choose, applied for local grants, used tax credit money, asked for fabric donations and searched thrift stores for bargains in order to make sure that students have the tools and materials they need to tell their stories. I have had to use electronics from previous year's designs, but it's okay. I hate for teachers to have to use their personal finances to buy things, but sometimes I just can't stop them. They get so excited, especially at the dollar store. And people are very generous. Sometimes it helps to give them specific pathways to give their time, treasures, or talents. This is all hard work, but it is worthwhile work. It brings joy to the adults as well as the students, which is important. I had this fifth grader tell me that the day of the runway show was the best day of her life. This after hours of redoing Dragon Scales. These moments are what keep educators going. In the big scheme of things, one fashion show at a school may not be a life changer, but then again, maybe it could be. But what if students had many of these types of experiences throughout their school years? Think of the skills, the understanding, the empathy, the knowledge, and the experience our students would have. This is what Maker Education can do, and this is what Make Fashion EDU is doing. Thank you. Hi, I'm Haley. I'm a 10th grade student and I've been a designer telling my stories on Make Fashion EDU's runway for more than two years now. For my first one runway project, I created a piece out of plastic bags to spare awareness about how plastic can harm the ocean. And I wanted to show that instead of throwing the plastic away, we can use it to create anything. To mimic the motion of the ocean, I added LED lights. I also learned how to solder 12 strips so that they can run off one Arduino board. I also learned how to program the Arduino board to get the LED lights to mimic the waves of the ocean. For my second runway project, I wanted to send a message to my peers and everyone that was struggling in their life for whatever reason, that they were valuable, that they were important. I built a hat that projected my brother's sonograms with the words, you are valuable, between each of my brother's sonograms. This project was particularly important to me because nowadays there are so many people who feel that they're useless and have no value, and that's not okay. I want them to be confident in themselves. I want everyone to be confident in themselves and know that they matter because they do, no matter what anyone else says. Everyone has a place in this world. It also made me realize that what we have is limited, so we should use our lives to be happy and live it in the best way possible. How Make Fashion has impacted me? Well, now I see the relevance of math as I had to imply it to create my pieces. I know now what I can do with technology. I never thought I'd be able to pick up the skills of soldering and programming, let alone use them to express myself. Make Fashion has allowed me to express problems that I think are important and share them with the world. But the best part is I get to do it in my way. Since there's no limit to what I can do, I can be as creative as I want, and I try to make sure my stuff is awesome and creative and everything. But I also want them to have a very important meaning behind them. That way 
I am being creative, I'm expressing myself, and I'm also helping others all at the same time. Thank you, Twyla, Haley, James, Candice, and Hollinger K-8 through for sharing. Thank you for hanging out with us today. We work to bring equity and joy in the classrooms and communities with fashion and technology, and I hope this will be a way for you to do the same. Please head to our website, steamhead.space, for the documents and shares we promised today. We hope these resources will help you take the next steps. You can also find student stories, designs, and ways for your students to participate in the next runway event at makefashionedu.org. We would love it if you shared your ideas and builds with the hashtag makefashionedu. If you have questions, join our community of designers, educators, and makers on the Make Fashion EDU Discord. You can find instructions on how to get onto Discord at the website, steamhead.space. We will be hanging out there, available to chat after this. See you there. Again, I'm Carrie Leung with Make Fashion EDU. I want you to make great things, and I want you to make it happen. Thank you.